Hello, happy stampers. How is everybody tonight? Welcome to Tools and Techniques Thursdays. So tonight I'm going to be doing a technique with some new product out of the new J&J &J mini catalog and celebration catalog. So much fun. I want to show you how you can use a couple of items differently than you would think. The fun technique we're going to be doing is called the graffiti technique. And this technique was actually taught by um, Shannon West, who is our DDM for the Midwest here. And she sh showed this to us a, a while ago. And I had um, actually planned on bringing this to you earlier. And then once I saw the um, mini catalog and the celebration catalog, I thought, you know what, I have to wait because I want to show these guys, everyone, how to use some products a little bit differently than you would think of. So what do you say? Let's get started. I'm going to switch you around and attach my mic. I want to say hello to my Facebook viewers and to my YouTube viewers. Welcome, welcome. Let me adjust this here. Here we go. I'm going to wrap up my cord just a little bit here. And, you know, I'd like to welcome all our live viewers and those of you who are watching the replay. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join me tonight. And I hope that um, as you are coming on, Please say hello and type your name in caps and where you're from so I can say hi back to you, okay? So some of the products we're going to be using is out of the Celebration Catalog, which is this catalog here. If you turn to page 10, you're going to see some Simply mar Marvelous Designer Series paper. You guys, this paper is awesome. Um, I'm actually going to use some gray one of the grays but let me pull this one out here you have you know you've got some blues in here you've got some grays here and it's like a on one side it almost looks like a granite and then the other side you get these swirly effects and then you've got this gorgeous bermuda bay and gorgeous grape is that great oh i can just see so many things with this and then this one here is i've got to check this out bumblebee you've got bumblebee and then this one in the front is Flirty Flamingo. But the colors that match are Balmy Blue, Basic Gray, Blushing Bride, Bumblebee, Coastal Cabana, Flirty Flamingo, Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, Misty Moonlight, Pool Party, Smoky Slate, and So Saffron. So like in this one, you can tell that there's different colors in here. These are gorgeous and so much fun. Then on the opposite page, you're going to see these awesome otters. I just love these guys. I, You know what? I'm going to be honest. Um, out of all the stamp sets that I've gotten so far, this is the one that I have used the most. I don't know why, you know, at first I thought, oh, they're cute, you know, but then I got them in my hands and, you know, I just come up with so many ideas with these. Then I am combining it with the Sweet Conversations bundle, and I'm using the stamp set only tonight, and page nine of the j to j mini catalog. Now, if you don't have these catalogs and aren't currently working with a demonstrator, give me a shout out and I will send them to you. Just a private message me on Facebook or email me at judy at judystamps.com and Judy is with an I. So here are the stamp sets. As you can see, the Awesome Otters is a set of six. You have four images and two little verses. And the Sweet Conversations stamp set is a set of 17. And I thought that these two stamp sets were going to be awesome for this technique. Besides that, we are going to be using um, our white craft pad tonight. So I am going to be using my stamp and scrub. Okay, the reason why I'm using my stamp and scrub is because the white gets in between all the crevices of your stamp set of your stamp. So you want to make sure you get it good and clean. So I am spraying some of our cleaning mist on one side and the other side is um, to dry it. Now, mine is black on one side and white on the other because um, when I first started with Stampin' Up, they came 
both sides white, and then they switch to both sides black. So this is my last white one that I have. So that's my drying side. So besides that, we are going to be using our um, heat gun. Now, this heat gun does have two settings, which I love because if you are doing something that you don't need that high, fast blowing heat, it's kind of like blow drying your hair, you know? Sometimes you want that burst of air and that strong heat, and sometimes you just want it softer. So um, I love our heat tool. We're going to be using our brick and mortar 3D embossing um, folder. And then our, we are going to be using Memento ink. And I just noticed I don't have any here right now. I'm going to have to run to the other side and get it. But real quick, our card base is um, real red, measuring four, five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And I'm just going to take my bone folder and score that or burnish that score line. Then I have a piece of basic white that measures four by five and a quarter. That's for the inside of our card. And then I have a piece of the marvelous um, marbling, the marvelous um, designer series paper. And that measures only a eighth of an inch smaller than five and a half. So it's five and three eighths by... Um, four and one, two, three sixteenths, I believe it is, or it's a sixteenth smaller. Let me see. Wait a minute. Let me make sure. So I give you four and eight, four and an eighth. So as you can see, that's not quite a quarter inch. And you're going to notice that I have a little square out of the inside. I didn't want to waste this paper. So I cut one inch to the inside of my outside and saving that piece for later. Then I have a piece of basic white, which we're going to be stamping on that measures three and three quarters by five inches. And isn't that just so cool? Wait till you see what we end up with. So let me real quick, while I'm thinking of it, grab my memento. Sorry about that. I thought I had everything. And we're going to get stamping, okay? So first of all, we all are also going to be using a spritzer, and I'll be going through some of that stuff. We have our piece that we're going to stamp on. And we want this to look like a graffiti wall. So I wanted to stamp in different um, fonts and different words. So I actually, because this is going to be a Valentine's card, I went into another set from last year called Always in My Heart and this Be My Valentine script. I think we're going to use that also. So let me grab that out. I just had grabbed that, Be My Valentine. I love this set and the Sweet Conversations goes great with this set. You get that mounted onto a block so we don't lose it. So we're going to have that. Then we're going to go into our sweet conversations. And I can just see these X's and O's all over a wall, can't you? So we're going to grab those and mount those onto some blocks. Getting all our stamps ready. Now, you could stamp your, your wall with as much as you want. Um, and then we have some hearts in here. So I'm taking this medium heart here and I am going to take this hug me stamp, this heart with the hug me right here. And we will be stamping that on here. And then we have some mini hearts. Now these mini hearts are all three in a row. But you don't have to stamp them three in a row. We're going to actually stamp them separately. So to start with, we are going to get ready um, to do our stamping first and lay this out. I am using a stamping buddy. I know we don't carry this anymore. Um, but I want, you could use talcum powder if you don't have a stamping buddy. So we're going to get that on there. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp in our white. 
Now this, the white is a pigment ink, so it dries slower, which gives us some time to um, emboss. And I do have some white embossing powder, which I'm gonna open up right here. And then I have a tray, but you could use, um, these are retired. You could use a coffee filter or a piece of paper that you can just gather up your embossing powder. So let's figure out our layout. I know I'm gonna have this little otter picking, peeking out from the top. I don't know if I'm gonna put the whole thing on here, but we're gonna end up stamping him on a separate piece of paper and cutting him out. So our wall is going to be the background. So what you may wanna do is grab your stamps and we're gonna have him, you know, we might have him all the way up. Have him up there. Um, do the Be My Valentine here. Let's do our XOXO. We could do that. Actually, we could do, um, we want to make it look graffiti-like and not perfect. So I'm just going to scatter these around. I'm going to probably put another X up here. And then I'm going to fill in with these smaller stamps. He's not going to be stamped on here. We're actually going to stamp him separately and count him out, cut him out. So let's start stamping. Now I am using the white ink instead of Versamark. You could use Versamark if you wanted, but with the white, I can actually see better where I'm stamping. And I'm going to clean off my stamp right away. So I've got it here. Um, can't swipe, quite see it in the camera. I'm just going to wash and dry it real quick. So the ink doesn't dry up there. So we have an X here. Let's do an O up here. And then we're going to do another X. We'll do this X here. And I put that X sideways so it's not perfect. You know, when they color, you know, I'm amazed at graffiti artists. Um, I truly believe that many of them are true artists. Uh, are you one that loves to watch um, the trains go by so that um, you can watch all the graffiti on the side? I know they're not supposed to do that, but I just love watching the graffiti. So I stamped the Be My Valentine on there. Let's get a couple of these. Uh, well, we'll do the small hearts last. We'll do the Hug Me. Can we have, we're going to do the Hug Me up here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my embossing powder on here. And, ooh, I have some pieces of paper. Oh, dear. It usually doesn't stick. So now we can see our images a lot better. And I just wiped off the Valentine at the end here. So let's just get that on there. So now I can see where my images are. So now I know where I can stamp some more. So let's get... Oh, we can even put it so it's behind him a little bit or her, whatever you want to say. So we have two. Let's do this heart off the side here. And then I am going to only stamp one of the little hearts. I'm not going to do the full row to begin with. I just want to add, let's wipe that off really good because the embossing powder will stick on there. Add a little one up here, over here, and then I'm going to put the full row right down here on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and put our embossing powder on the rest of this. Let's see if I can remember where I put them all. There we go. Okay, so now we have our embossing powder on. I'm going to check to see if there's any places that have it that I don't want it. We've got quite a bit on there. This is a lot of graffiti on this one. Okay, I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to start it up. So it might be a little bit noisy for just a minute. And I do have it on the hotter center, higher setting, but it is pretty quiet. Okay, and I'm going to take it over here a little bit away from my mat because I have actually warped my mat from using my heat gun too close to it. So as you can see, it's heating up and you can just watch it and you just move 
your gun around as it heats up. Don't wave your gun around. And I do see I have a little specks in this white. So this was the white that I shouldn't use. This is the white that I have to um, actually sift through and clean out some of the papers that have gotten into it from some of my classes. But that's okay because, you know, this is graffiti and graffiti walls aren't perfect, right? They do. The walls do have dirt and stuff on them. Okay, so we have that on there. So we want that to cool before we emboss it um, with our embossing folder. So we're going to let that cool. Let me turn my gun off. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and stamp our little guy onto a scrap piece of basic white here. You get a block for him and we are going to use our memento now i am going to color him i have been doing a lot of valentine cards with him i think she's just too cute um it's actually they have a birthday hat in there um but i just thought he was just a, too cute not to do valentine cards okay so he's good and stamped so I don't know if I'm going to do a pink belly on him. I may. I have done some different things. I have done paper piecing in the middle. I have colored him all pink. Um, but I am going to start out with our Stampin' Blends. And I am going to use my, um, creamy, my yeah, creamy Caramel. Oh, my gosh. Do you believe that? Crumb Cake. Creamy Caramel is an old color from when I first started. So I am just going to color around his body. I may let, I might decide to make his belly pink. You know, um, so I'm going to hold off doing his belly right now. So let's do his body and just color it in very quickly, saturating that paper. Okay, so we're getting that color in there. Going to the dark crumb cake and um doing some of the lines for shadows down here a little bit this leg maybe around his muzzle just a little bit this arm would be a little bit darker there and in here i think that's enough now i'm going to go back with my light and i'm going to blend that out and what that's also going to do is that's putting another layer of color on her for him i think it's going to be a him today i need to do a valentine for my grandson and so you know we might do his belly red yeah you know what i think i'm gonna do it red because this is going to be for my grandson so i don't want to make it too girly right although he doesn't mind although neither him or my granddaughter like pink i don't know I believe this is my real red. Let me see. Yep. So we're going to go with our light real red first and put that in his belly. Oh my gosh, he's going to look like he was shot. <laughs> no. no, this is fine. It'll be all okay when we're done. <laughs> okay, I don't worry about those white spots. We're going to go a little bit darker because I think that that is going to be too pink for him. So I'm going to bring this red out a little bit. And that's going to be covering some of those pinkier spots. I'm going to leave this very center a little bit lighter. And I think that's great. I'm going to take my color lifter and I am going to take my brush tip for my color lifter. And I'm just going to blend that in the center just a little bit just a touch. Now, I don't want his nose black, black, so I am going to take my light gray granite and just color his nose just a little bit. Then I am going to take my light basic black and with the brush tip, just kind of color where the artist has colored his nose. There we go. So it's not completely dark. Now, while we're doing this, our 
embossing powder is cooling. So I'm going to go ahead and cut him out. And we're going to actually um, stamp another one of him for the inside of the card. But we will do that in a little bit. Let me get rid of all that. I don't like a lot of excess paper paper when I'm around the edges when I'm cutting. So a lot of times I'll kind of cut closer, just like an oval. Um, but I also do that where I just cut off the excess as I'm cutting. Remembering to move your paper around, not your scissors as much. Now we're not going to go all the way against here because he does have a little bit of hair coming out from his body. This is just a cute little guy. I can just see, I could even see doing him for St. Patrick's Day, you guys. Putting a little um, leprechaun hat on him. Oh my gosh. How cute, right? Let's get rid of that there so we can go around these curves a little bit easier. So, I love my paper snips. They're very sharp. They're just the right size for cutting around things. You know, they're very comfortable in my hand and light. Okay, so we've cut him out. So let's go back to our paper, our base. And we're going to get our, oops, cut and emboss machine. And we're going to be embossing our paper. Now we are embossing over the um, embossing powder. Remember that you want your bricks going in the right direction. So I know I want my paper this way and the bricks are going this way. So we're going to go ahead and put this on right here. Put our bottom plate, put our gray embossing plate number four on top, which you use with your 3D folders. It should go through very, very quickly and easily. It shouldn't be tough. You know, I've shortened my um, mic wire so it's not hanging down, but every time I go to stretch to my back counter, I'm like hanging myself. <laughs> Good evening, Janet. I see that you're on. Several of other people are on this evening from around the world, actually. So here we go. Can you see that embossing on there? It might be a little bit tough, but it is. you're going to see it in a minute. Next thing we're going to use is our spritzer. Now, I've put about a third of the way up. I have put 91% alcohol in here. You could use the um, cheaper alcohol if you want, rubbing alcohol, the 70% if you want. Um, I just like the 91% because it dries faster. It is harder to find right now, I know. The next thing we're gonna use is, ooh, I just shoved that right in my mouth. <laughs> so it probably got really loud there. I'm sorry if I blasted your ears. Oh dear. Um, I have just one of my Stampin' Up! boxes here and I will turn my camera to show you what I'm doing. Let me put my box here. Got to move my embossing stuff. Okay, so I'm going to move my camera so you can see. I'm hoping you're not upside down. Okay, so here's my box. It's just one of the Stampin' Up! boxes. And I am going to set my card up on the back of that, just like that. So it's setting up on the back and the bottom of the box. Let me see if I can flat this edge up. Let me get a clip to clip that so it doesn't fall down and you guys can't see. So you could use um, like a plate holder, you know, one of those easels for cards. Um, I also have this little holder here for my cell phone. I can use that to set it up just so that it angles. I'm going to take my, I'm going to flip you back around here just a second. Back down. So I've got my spritzer. I've got my rubbing alcohol in there. 
Now I am going to take um, actually two colors of Ray Inker. I knew I wanted it red, but I want a little bit of pink in it. So I'm actually going to put two drops, one, two drops of red, and then one drop of the Mar Magneta, Magenta Madness. I almost named another old color. You know, those, those names just stick in your head. <laughs> and, and I'm one that I remember more from a long time ago as I'm getting older than I do from the present. So I've got that in there. And I am just going to shake that. I want that color all in that rubbing alcohol. Okay, get it all off the side. And it is. Now, I do not recommend keeping the alcohol in your holder. I recommend taking this um, when you're done with it and rinsing it out, especially the top, so you don't break, so the seals don't kind of get um, loose, not looser, but you know, worse off. So let's move this around. It is kind of at an angle, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take my spritzer. And I'm going to spritz. I'm going to get kind of close because I want it to look like they've splashed paint on there. So we're going to spritz. Oops. Almost spritz it the wrong way. Let me try. There we go. We're going to spritz it close. And I'm pretty close. I'm only about an inch, inch and a half away. And I'm going to spritz it. And I'm going to make sure I get a lot on there. Okay. And, oh, I don't think I have quite enough color. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit more of the red into it. So I just added one more drop. This is going to dry, take a little bit to dry, but it does dry rather quickly. I'm shaking this up. Okay, and we got a little bit more color. So each, oh, look at that color. That's a lot better. Um, so when you fill this, and you don't want it necessarily cover the entire thing, but I do want it to look like it's paint running down. So there we go. So see how that's dripping down now? That's kind of what I get. And it's really light in these areas, but we're going to let that dry by itself. And look how much. I still have left. I, you know, it's it's still this much. I didn't even use half of what I put in here. So I'm probably going to do another background really quick when I get off today. So I'm just going to let this sit for just a second and run down so that it doesn't get all over everything. And in the meantime, while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and finish our stamping. So let's get, make sure this is all dried off. Turn you down. Okay, we're going to get our pieces. So I have my card base. I'm going to go ahead and put on my marble paper. And I am going to use my liquid glue. Spread this down here a little bit. Oh. So it's quite cold outside today. We're supposed to be at, at least, I think, a minus 23 tonight. So that's the first layer. But now we have the inside. So let's stamp our little guy on the inside and do some coloring. So we're just going to do him on the inside here, right in that bottom corner. Oh dear, two sides. Wow, I haven't had that happen in a long time. I've really pressed too hard on that. Okay, let's try again. There we go. I just re-inked that pad. If you've been following um, my Facebook page, you know that I've been we've been doing some cleaning. And last Thursday, on our we talked about cleaning. Um, some of our tools and stamps and our ink pads and re-inking. So let's get our 
colors again and let's color him. I'm going to go ahead and use the brush tip. I'm coloring on the side of this, but I want to do it a little bit quicker. Um, I don't recommend using the brush tip on the side to color until you get used to coloring with your blends. Once you are used to coloring with them, it's quite easy not to get the bleeding outside the image. But until you get used to it, using the brush tip um, is a little bit um, a learning curve to it. Let's give them dark down here a little bit too. Okay, for this next step, I'm going to do circles and my fine tip because I want to be able to push down and spread that ink, you know, so that it blends in with the um, dark and blends that dark out a little bit so I don't have such strict lines all over okay and then this one you do have to kind of be careful so you don't go outside the lines let's do the inside i'm going to just try the dark um and not use the light so let's see well you know we could have done his belly just the light um crumb cake also i'm just gonna don't mind the red take my color lifter a little bit and go up the center to, and that will lighten it up. You'll see it lighten. It's already lightening up now. It just depends on how much liquid you still have in your um, uh, pen. As it dries out, you're going to notice that you have, um, it doesn't blend as quickly. I'm just using the dark this time and then I'm going to go over it with that gray granite light. So I'm just doing it in the reverse order. There we go. I'm not going to put a verse in here yet, um, but I am going to stamp a couple hearts, I think. So I'm going to grab my real red ink pad and I will grab the hearts. And we go I'm just gonna put a red heart in his hand coming off like that just like that oh look how dark that came out that's just real red but that's okay okay let's go to our mat oh my gosh I love how it came out and it's not quite dry so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just blast it on the low setting of my heat gun and I'm going to put it on the back side because the paint, the water has actually, the or the um, alcohol has soaked into my paper. So we want to make sure that that is dry when we go and put it onto our card front. So I did the back first because it'll curl that way. And I'm just going to hold this up higher. And I should not be doing it on my black mat because it's just going to warp it more and but look at that look how that came out oh i love it okay i'm going to take a little bit of piece of paper towel and just rub over the embossing just to get some of it off now if some of it may stick on there because because this um is a textured stamp so it's got little dots in there which is okay because it looks like they used chalk paint right <laughs> yeah okay so i am going to go ahead now i'm going to use my liquid glue again because this embossing folder is quite deep it has a lot of texture to it let me use the other side it's running low here let's spread some of this so it doesn't squish out here we go get that on there this bottle is just about had it okay 
we're going to put this on make sure we have it the right way look at that isn't that fun and look that back that designer series paper oh my gosh i i can tell you you know i'll hold up um the other side of it the more stone looking but i thought that it was too light see this you know you could use either side it would be okay but i just like the darker um that's just me okay so we're going to take this little guy and i'm just going to take my bone folder give him a little bit of motion there a little bit of puffiness and i'm going to grab my dimensionals and we're just going to put the dimensionals right up the middle of him because i want the middle of him to pop up and then the sides are going to look like they're curved down let's grab our take your pick tool yeah i have that stuff here tonight what do you say okay we're just going to put him right down here just like that now um I am thinking that we can do another heart, stamp a heart, and um, pop it in his hand. What do you say? How about the love you one? Let's see. Love you? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to take this one off. We're going to do it in red on a scrap of basic white. I may have a piece right here that's just big enough for this. It is. Do the love you. Oh, just like that. Let that dry a second. I'm going to take the lighter or the solid image and do it in a lighter pink. I think we're going to go with um, polished pink and we will stamp off with it. I think that's gonna do the trick. So we're gonna go with the coordinating heart right here. Get that on here. So this is gonna look like a conversation heart, like the little candies that you get. And I'm not too sure about embellishments. Do you think that we should do some black embellishments? Um, I'm thinking black because it is for my grandson. I don't want to do sparkly, although he does love sparkly right now. <laughs> now, we do have a dye for this, but for me right now, talking to you, just chatting a minute, we're just going to real quick fussy cut this out. Hearts are pretty easy to fussy cut. Um, if I was doing a bunch of them, I definitely would be um, die cutting them. But for just one, I don't mind doing this. We have our Happy Valentine there. We're going to go ahead and pop that up with a pop dot, our Stampin' Dimensional. And we're going to let him hold it on this side, just like that. Okay, so I did, did grab out some black mat, um, but I'm not too sure if I want those or not. I do have these elegant faceted gems that would add a little bit of sparkle, but clear in the back. What do you think? Oh, I'm going to go ahead with these because I just think that the black would be too much. And we just do a couple of them. I think it'll be okay. He'll like it. So we're going to add one down here. See, they're kind of clear. So one there. I'm using the bigger ones. We're just going to add three of them on there, just like that. So go ahead and take this and put it on the inside. I'm out of that glue. Just grabbed another glue. I always have these handy. This is my most used adhesive. I love the liquid glue, although I do use our stamp and seal a lot. Okay, I'm going to put that right in there. And then I'm going to, I think I'm going to hand write on the inside because I think that that would kind of go with the graffiti thing. Um, I could even do some X's and O's on the inside. I think I've cleaned these off good enough to use this here. 
X. Oh, I don't know why that's so dark. Oh, I think because I just re-inked it. X. Just like that, bring that front into the inside. And then I'm going to do some handwriting to him. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about some new product tonight. Some fun stuff. Are you guys excited for the new catalogs? Woo! I know I am. Let me flip this around here. Before I say goodbye to all of you this evening. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So that is the graffiti technique. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Use different colors. I, You know, you could even squirt different colors on the background, like true graffiti walls, not just, you know, one color. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do a Valentine card. Um, maybe in the future we'll do another one with some different sets. So if you want that, let me know, and I will bring those to you. So until next time, everybody, happy stamping. Bye-bye.